Hi and welcome to this DCP Web HTML5 and CSS Beginners Tutorial. In part 14, we're going to look at using audio and video clips with native HTML5 audio and video player. So, let's go ahead and open up Google Chrome. And in Google Chrome, I'm going to type in sample MP4 file. We want a sample video to play and I'm going to click on this one right here. And what I'll do is click on this MP4 download and I'll put a link in my YouTube description where you can download this file. So I'll click here, pause this video, click here and click download. And we'll drag and drop this to our desktop so we've got the file here. And now we need some audio. So for me the easy place to get free audio is on YouTube free audio. You can go to audio library here. You need to be logged into your um, YouTube account to download files so make sure you've got a YouTube account um, and then you can download these files we'll go to genre and we'll pick something like uh, classical maybe not classical let's do hip hop and uh, we'll just download this Brooklyn one right and we drag and drop the mp3 file here so we can close the browser for the moment now with the mp3 file, I just want to rename it to audio and with the video one, I just want to rename it to video. So we've got, it's called video.mp4 and audio.mp3. I'm going to open up the folder and I want to create a new folder. Let's create a new folder called assets. And inside this assets folder, I want to create a subfolder. And that one's going to be called audio and we'll create another folder called video and let's in fact create a third one right we could have like pdf in here for example so we can have different subfolders in here the pdf one we won't use at the moment maybe in later tutorials i'll show you how to connect directly to a pdf file we can have a look at that maybe in a future tutorial but here's some you know the reason why i've created this assets folder is i just don't want all files to be stored on what we call the root directory so we call, consider this to be the top location think of it that way and it's called the root directory and inside your root directory you want to keep it nice and clean you don't want to just dump all your files into one one folder and then upload it to the server when you start running your website you want to keep everything in a structure so all, all images will go here in assets you've got subfolders so all audio will go in here and all video will go here so later when it comes to updating or changing something on your website you're going to know if you need to change a, an audio clip or a video clip or upload a new PDF file it'll be very easy for you to find a location where to put that it'll also make your code easier to read because you've got references in the folders as to what you're looking at so we'll go to the audio folder and we'll right click on the audio clip holding down the mouse button with the right mouse button and we'll move it here and then we'll go to the video folder and we'll right click and hold down the mouse button and we'll move it here okay so the next thing we want to do is go back to the root directory and we'll open up Google Chrome, we'll drag that to the left and we'll drag and drop our index file into here so we can see our code. And we'll just open up Notepad++ and here we can see the website here, what we've written and here's all the code. So the last thing we did is we created, uh, what did we do, let's have a look. We did these iframes, right, so we had the video here. We had this internal page and then we use YouTube iframe. So we showed a few different examples of iframe. And underneath this HR here, I want to create another one. Let's just save this. And we're going to put our players in between these two horizontal lines here. So let's have a go at putting some audio. So with HTML5, like I mentioned before, a lot of the things, a lot of the tags that you use would make a lot of sense, right? So if we want audio, we're going to create an audio tag. And every tag that we create, in most cases, we need to create a closing audio tag like this. And with the audio tag or the audio player, we need to give it a location to where this uh, MP3 file is located. So we're going to open and close tag. And we want to say in here, the source, the source. Where is that located? So the source is located in a folder called assets, right? In a subfolder called audio. And inside that subfolder, we called it 
audio.mp3. See, so you can know now you see why naming things correctly will help you to find the location. I didn't even have to, we, we'll double check this actually to make sure it's correct. So let's do that. But if you name things, especially when you work on a lot of different projects, so if you're building websites for lots of different clients and um, you know, you want to um, have structure, then we know that all of our audio is always going to be in this assets folder. So we're going to assets and we've got audio and it was called audio.mp3. So there it is. And we just need to tell the browser what type of file it's going to be. And it's going to be an audio clip and it will be an MPEG file. And that's it. So there's a few other things we need to do. If we save this and refresh, nothing's going to happen, right? Nothing's happening because we need to tell the audio that it requires some controls to control the audio clip. Now when we refresh, here we've got our audio player. We can click play. We can mute the audio here and we can scrub through the track. And this is all playing natively, right? So before HTML5, you would have to go and build this whole player and or you need to get a, like some third party code in order to get this audio clip playing. It was a, it was much more difficult to get all your work. Well, it wasn't difficult, but there was much more work to be done in order to just get a simple MP3 file playing. Now, because the audio has been built into HTML5, that is all you need. One, two, three lines of code. In theory, it could be one line of code. You could take that and just move it all onto one single line. And you could have just like one line of code that will allow you to play audio. So that's pretty cool. Now let's try and do the same with video. So logic tells us if we just did audio, then video would need to be the other tag, right? And inside the video, it's just like the audio. We need to give it a source. And the source will be, and this is where we, if we name things well in our in our directories, I think it was video. We we'll double check it, and it'll be video dot mp4. So let's just check that path. So we'll go back. It's uh, assets video, and then video dot mp4 assets video video dot mp4. So that's perfectly fine. And then just like the audio, we need to state the type of video it is. It can be different types of file formats, and this one will be an MP4 video. Now, what else do we need? We need to give the video some controls, right? So the user can play and stop and do things with this video clip. And the video, we can actually set the width and height. So let's set the width to something like 400 maybe, and then the height we'll set it to 240 and let's save it and we'll refresh now we've got that video clip playing we can click play we can mute it we can make it go full screen we can scrub through the video backwards and forwards and we can even do something called picture in picture so we can minimize all of this we've got the video clip playing right here so we can do picture in picture natively using HTML5 which is pretty cool. So we pause that and um, we'll go back to here. And there's a little X here to close it, right? And when we close it, it will move the video back into here you can continue to play it. You can mute it while it's working, playing. Um, and all of that, so these two assets or these two tools here, the video and audio player, if we uh, look at our code, you can see they're very simple, right? It used to take a bit of work to get this working uh, before. We used to have we used to do third party tools to play the video, third party tools to play the audio. Now, a couple of tips for you, right? Although um, we can easily play the video and the audio clip straight in our web browser, my advice to you is to upload your videos to YouTube. So why would I why would you do that? Number one, you're gonna get much more exposure in YouTube. If so, I make a lot of videos, right? So if we go to this uh, this page here, my YouTube page, and we click on videos. You can see all these different video clips that I've done. Now I could just load them straight from, from my server, like we're doing right now. 
straight into the into the page but then i'll be paying for all of those streaming costs so i need a pretty good server because imagine if 50 people or 100 people want to look at my videos all at the same time then it takes a lot of bandwidth to send that content across the internet you know i've got videos up here at 165,000 views some of them are close to a quarter of a million and you got to consider that when you're streaming a lot of content some of my videos get a lot of views so i just i choose to upload my videos to youtube but it's worth knowing that these audio and video control players are available right so it's worth knowing and how knowing how to use them i'm not saying don't use them um I'm saying that if you want to get maximum exposure to your video clips, then YouTube is probably the best place to do that. Now, when it comes to audio, um, there's another website, right? It's called SoundCloud. And SoundCloud is almost like YouTube, but for audio instead. So SoundCloud is very popular if you want to upload just audio tracks. So if you're doing like a podcast and you want to upload that audio track, then you can upload it to SoundCloud and then you can embed that um that content in a similar way that we did the iframe here for youtube so soundcloud will give you an equivalent of that for uh, audio in fact uh, let's try and see if we can get one to work so let's click here maybe we can do one off of one of these i don't know maybe i'll go i don't know if it will let me uh probably be a bit of work to try and get this uh, let's see so we'll try and embed this right let's try there is a I haven't done this for a while this should normally be like a share option or something here but I think you may need to be logged in to share or well, some of these things you just can't share but I'm pretty sure oh, here we go share embed this is the iframe code, we'll copy this. And this is an example of an audio clip, right? Then we can go back to our page here and we'll put this audio clip just above this uh, YouTube one or below it, should I say. Now we've got this iframe here. It's 100 wide, 300 high, and it's an audio player. We press refresh. Now we've got the audio clip in here from SoundCloud. <laughs> That's just audio, although it looks a bit like a video player, it's really just playing audio. So we could set the height to something like, uh, let's say 100, and then the width to something like 400, and then it will look more like an audio player. So that's how you can just, and you, we could have uploaded that to SoundCloud, right? So this SoundCloud is an equivalent of this audio player here. And this YouTube is equivalent of this video play here, but you should know that you can stream them from third party where you're going to save some cost in terms of streaming large amounts of content um, opposed to using localized versions, right? So if you was running something like an intranet for your company and the company had a login and password where where your, your, um, cust where your staff could log in or log into an intranet place, then you may want to share video content and audio content that only they can listen to then you know that the number of people that are going to be listening to it is going to be minimal and then you can maybe use these tools or if you don't want to have your content exposed to the internet fully because anyone on youtube or soundcloud can listen to this stuff or embed it then you could use these native controls so there's a couple of different options there for myself um if we go to dcp web if we go to my blog and we go to blog type and click video then you see all of the videos that I've created and all of these videos will be embedded from YouTube. So I'll upload them to YouTube, then I may, I'll may i embed them here into my blog. Okay, so if we just leave that full screen, you can see these are sitting side by side, whereas everything else is in a column. So to fix that, let's quickly fix that. In between this audio and video, we'll add a break line, refresh it then those will sit on top of each other like this. So I hope you find that useful. That's probably, you know, most of the HTML5 stuff that we're going to go through. So you'd be glad to hear that we're not really going to be doing too many more HTML5 things. Uh, we're going to probably do one little overview.
um, in the next tutorial and then we're going to move over to CSS and that's where all the fun really starts right CSS will allow us to take all of this content that we've created and lay it out exactly how we want to lay it out and manipulate the information on the page so the colors and the styles and the formatting we can do a lot of things with CSS we can manipulate a lot of things here on this page to make it look more presentable so maybe we'll look at that some basic CSS um, in the near future tutorials so let's close this let's close this i hope you understand that and i look forward to seeing you on the next dcp web tutorial